so the project, uh, just to give you a sense of it, I think these stakes that are going to the to the north sort of lead to where the project will start, which is at the end of, of Heron Lake. And um, Heron Lake will discharge into a channel. We're standing in what is going to be a fairly large channel. It is designed in order to convey the 100-year flood flows that might ex escape from the river to the west of us here and recapture those flows and redirect them back south. It's really sort of a taming of the river um, with a gravity system that usually works really good. Uh, gravity systems don't fail on you. You don't have to rely on pumps and those kinds of things to make them work. Um, and so we're really comfortable and confident that this project is going to uh, uh, really pay off in, in not only protecting our citizens, but, but also to be done in a way that we can all be proud of in protecting the environment. Um, just real quickly, uh, some of you may be familiar with this or not, but this has probably been one of the, uh, the most interesting projects from a natural resources and uh, endangered species. I don't think I've ever done a project that at one end of the project, we have the, the Preble's jumping mouse, which was like one of the first times it was found uh, this close into the city. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, that's sort of cool. So we got, we got mice out here. Now we got to figure out how to, how to do this project in a way that respects their habitat and does it in a way that doesn't destroy it. And I thought, well, that's not too big a deal. We'll figure that out, right? Well, just as soon as we got that figured out, then um, our eagle pairs decided to, that they really like the tree up north here. I don't know which tree it is, but it's somewhere up north here that that would be their home. And not only, you know, and they, so they built a nest and had, you know, laid their eggs and we followed them all the way through. And I really appreciate all the work Boulder County did along with uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife and really watching the eagles. And y'all probably saw that saga play out through the press. And all I can say is, you know, Papa Eagle, you did a pretty good job. Sounds like you got your two kids raised and you got them out of the house. And so <laughs> I'd like to get there with my own kids, but... Um, so now we're at a point where we can really get going, and I think it's a, it's a testament to patience. It's a, it's a testament to trying to do things the right way in a way that, that respects all of the different values that we all hold, but not losing sight of our need to protect people and to protect um, our homes and our businesses here in the city of Longmont. Uh, our contractor is Nizoni. Did I get that right? Um, and so... Um, we're anxious for you guys to get going here and start moving some dirt. And, um, you know, as we build this project, you can tell we're standing out here in just a beautiful uh, uh, pasture that's irrigated. You know, we all drove through the little water area there. And so our challenge now is going to be to work very closely with Todd Hazelbush, uh, who farms uh, this property, as well as the Zweck family, as well as uh, the Golden family, to make sure that we now do the project in a way that doesn't disrupt agriculture. So it's just another challenge is the way I see it. We'll figure it out. We'll get it done in a way that, that also respects that. So, you know, we don't want anybody to lose a cornfield and, and that over this, uh, this process either. Um, again, it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a big old channel here. It, and, and we're gonna try to do it in such a way that it, that'll be grass back in and it'll look fairly natural. Long term, our plan is, is that this, this property is, is set to be mined. And as that happens, the channel may move into a more natural low area as the mining progresses and moves ahead. Um, that's sort of the long-term plan, and we'll see how that works out as, as the mining occurs. And um, in that way, you're really relying then on the natural contours of the property to, to protect you, uh, as opposed to a man-made channel. So, well, Thank you, Dale. Um, I just want to say, you know, after the flood, the way we learn to work together to try to figure out what can we do better next time. Uh, Commissioner Gardner, all the county commissioners worked well with the city. I'm just also thankful that uh, people like Reggie Golden um, own this land or, or is on board with helping Longmont solve its problems. Uh, I think this just shows what collaboration can do when you have people that know how to work together and uh, learn the teamwork is, is what it's all about. And I think that this community has got some of the best teams and some of the best people I've ever worked with in my career, both on council and staff. Uh, I mean, sometimes people have differences of opinions, but we all have the same goals. We want Longmont to be a resilient community that's not gonna get damaged in a 100-year flood. 
And for that, I thank our county commissioners. I thank Golden Land Company and Reggie Golden and his family for being part of this solution. Thank you. The, um, you know, you're right. Didn't happen without a lot of collaboration and a lot of partnership. And I think that one of the, the day it started, I believe it was maybe Saturday of the Thursday, Friday, Saturday of the flood. And uh, we, the commissioners, got a call to uh, please come over to the city of Longmont. And I think Bonnie was there. I know that Gabe was there, um, others from council and um, others from the city of Longmont. And Ron Stewart was there from Parks and Open Space. And you know, we were looking at the impact that was happening to many of you that are here today. And, you know, I had friends also that were impacted and saw up close and personal the impact that was happening to you. And it's we all sat around that table and said, we got to fix this. There's got to be a way to fix this and fix it now. And um, so I'm not sure who went up in the airplane. I think Dale went up in the airplane, and I know Ron Stewart reluctantly went up in the airplane and flew this whole uh, area and figured out that the shortest amount of land that we could uh, dig out of the way was up in Hygiene Road. Uh, our joke at the county was it was about the only road that wasn't impacted previously by the flood. And <laughs> and so, but we got the uh, earth movers out there, uh, dug a, a big trench, and the water stopped flowing this way. I know it still took uh, days before that stop filling up downstream from there, but you know the major part of it was um, it was going to stop at some point going forward. And so that partnership and collaboration and the intent that we are going to find a way to help the people that are being um, impacted by this water and this flood uh, in the short term, we said we got to do that. And now this is the long-term solution. Uh, ideally, this will never, ever, ever have to happen. But we are going to build it so that if it does, the um, we've got a thing in place that even if it happened in the middle of the night, nobody has to wake up and get their our earth movers. It's just going to happen because uh, it will have been created. And so thanks again to the city for their foresight in that and the partnership around it. The county is bringing uh, about $100,000 to uh, FEMA money to this project and other, and the city's paying the, the balance. And, the, and I know that, and appreciate Reggie and, and everyone's a, patience, and two, uh, I think the long-term goal is to keep people uh, safe from future impacts, and we couldn't have done it without the partnership and collaboration of everyone involved, so thank you. Reggie and his right-hand man over here, uh, Barb, um, have been with us from day one on this flood. And Barb, I don't know how you do it. I really don't know how you keep up with all the things you're trying to do. He must be a really good guy to work for. Um, they have been proactive. They have been helping us to coordinate and communicate with the people here uh, in this part of the, uh, the river stretch, you know, working with the hazel bushes and the Gwyns and all their neighborhoods and uh, neighbors in the Zwex. You know, that's invaluable. That, that's not something that you can just go find somewhere. And Reggie, I just want you to know um, that you stepped up at a great time, and uh, we'll always remember it. So I guess on behalf of, of our family, you know, we're, we're proud to be able to contribute to the community in another way than um, we have in the past. Um, I, too, need to thank Barb because she really is my right hand. She, she uh, I just, I was telling somebody earlier, somebody calls me to do something, and I say, yeah, I'll get Barb right on that. <laughs> So uh, I really do appreciate Barb and what she does. Uh, my mom's here uh, and my wife, uh, Sarah's here today, also representing the Golden family and, and um, years of heritage in, the, in the, this area. So uh, just a quick story, Dale on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, I can't remember, we were out of, we were out of town. So I get a call from my 20 year old son that says, hey dad, the corrals are washing away, what do I do? <laughs> and so um, once we got all that solved, um, you know, I was itching to get home, but my other son was turning 25 and his mom didn't want to miss his birthday. 
<clears throat> so we ran down to LA. Well, first we stopped in uh, San Francisco because my mother-in-law wanted to see the trolley cars. So I put her on a trolley car at seven in the morning, went to one end of town, put her back. We came to the other end of town and we drove to LA to do breakfast with my son and Dale calls me. And cause I'm just, you know, chomping at the bit to get back and figure stuff out. Dale calls me and says, hey, what can we do to get water somewhere? And so, you know, the project really was born Saturday sometime. And um, so when I got back, we started talking about all the different possibilities, but it's really been a pleasure to work with the city and the county both. They've been um, very, um, what's the right word, observant, I guess, of our needs and our farmer, our tenant farmers' needs. And we've, you know, it's been a great project and, and uh, lots of meetings and lots of time. But I think at the end of the day, we're going to have something that's, uh, that's really quality and helps everybody. So um, we want this hole dug about three feet deep and <laughs> five. Yeah, five feet. If you, whoever hits water first wins. Good job. Hey.